What is up YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games and today's video we're going to be talking about the brand new Pokemon games Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. So we got the Gen 9 trailer on Pokemon Day and we learned about these games. However, there was a lot that was hidden within this video that I want to talk about and my predictions for the Generation 9 starters. So as you're going to see, Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet, and we're sort of getting some imagery going on in the background. Very, you know, coastal vibes. It's going to be a coastal area overall. And as you're going to see from this, you got some towns, very colorful. It looks like a great place to be, and graphically, I think it's pretty impressive as well for the Nintendo Switch. So let's start here. Various towns blend seamlessly into the wilderness with no borders. You'll be able to see the Pokemon of this region in the skies, in the seas, in the forests, on the streets, all over. You'll be able to experience the true joy of the Pokemon series, battling as wild Pokemon in order to catch them. Now in an open world game that players of any age can enjoy. So this is going to be a true open world game. Pokemon Legends Arceus is not an open world game. That is a game that has five different areas, stages that you have to go through. This is going to be a truly open world game where it's not going to be loading constantly to get back from certain areas all the time. This is going to be, you can get to point A to every other point without having to travel. So that's going to be really awesome. And I'm very excited for that. However, you know, looking at these images, we can see a lot going on with, hmm, this is very sort of tropical, sort of Spanish, honestly, a little bit of Spanish vibe going on. And I want to really talk about that. Because in the trailer right here, you can see the map right here. You can actually, I'm going to zoom in on the map a little bit as you can see it better. We see the map. This map is here on a very, very important reason. Because this gives us a big hint of what the region actually is. And you can see a lot of, you know, archaeological looking stuff on this wall. Like a big explorer theme is happening, right? Well, looking at this image right here... If we get a little bit closer, we can actually sort of rebuild the image from here to here. We can actually rebuild it, and it sort of looks like Spain and Portugal, actually. And when we really look at it together, or side by side, you can see the three triple islands. This is the big giveaway, in my opinion. The three triple islands right here, right there. And this is all the same. You know, you get the little horn down here little hook it's sort of pretty much the exact same you can't even see the full thing because there's some paper on it but you can assume this goes out further so you have spain and portugal and looking at the actual map of spain you can see that well we have spain and then portugal is over on the west coast and france is to the north so maybe we'll actually get some Kalos references going on in this game that'll be pretty interesting overall and the last thing i want to bring up about the region itself based on spain more proof is what looks to be the pokemon league in the trailer where the massive tower is sort of like a big cathedral with the pokeball well this is based on i believe i forgot the actual name of it i think is actually in madrid and yeah this is a real uh, structure so you can see that this is the same architecture it has the same type of pillars there's four pillars going on as well obviously there's not gonna be a pokeball in real life here but hey you never know maybe one day but yeah that's just cementing it this is in spain and using that thought process this is how i'm going to determine my theories on what we're going to be getting for the final evolutions of the starters now let's dive right into the gen 9 starter theory so we got the grass type here which is a spring agatio and this Pokemon is a cat. It has the like, featuring green and pink here. To me, this already speaks to me. This Pokemon is going to end up being a grass and fairy type, which I really hope. And I really hope it does not go bipedal. I don't want to be another Incineroar, but I'm thinking grass fairy, right? But what is this thing based on? May like help us make the decision. Well, I found this on Twitter and I looked this up and this is true. There is an Iberian lynx, which is native to Portugal. It's actually incredibly endangered, and I think there's only a few hundred left in the entire world, and there's a big reservation in southern Spain that are holding these lynxes. So, I can believe this, honestly. I mean, it's got the big whiskers coming out. It's like a big thing of this lynx to have, like, sort of the beard going on, and I can see that while this thing is evolving, the facial hair is going to get bigger and bigger. And I think it could be end of be, like being a fairy type just because 
fairies are elusive and maybe because it is so endangered it could be another reason it could be a fairy type so i'm thinking grass fairy for this one i think this one is pretty much a slam dunk on what this pokemon is going to be based on which is this lynx so i think that is a one and done deal but going to my personal favorite of three fue coco so fue coco here is one he's a fire type and he's a fire croc is the category so he's a he's a lazy guy he's hanging out it's important to note fue means like hot and he's a he looks like a hot pepper he has the pepper motif going on he has like the stem on the top of his head he has the tail if you look at him at the side he would end up being like a hot chili pepper right so that's where the hot is coming from but what does the cocoa part mean and the croc part this is very interesting i had to do a lot of wiki diving and i was talking to my girlfriend about this as well and what i came across is cocoa folklore so yeah, we're going to be wiki diving here and bear with me because this is really interesting. So the Coco or the Coca, also known as Koki, Koku, Kuka, Kuku, and Kuki is a mythological ghost monster equivalent to the boogeyman found in like essentially in like Spanish countries, like Spanish Portugal areas, right? And it is referenced as El Coco as well, right? And this monster was like sort of like a folklore thing that you would tell your children who are being bad and you know tell them they'll take them away and all this one's like you know just your typical boogeyman right but it actually has, it goes a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper than that so this is very interesting many latin american countries refer to the monster as el cuco in northern mexico and southern colorado where there is a large Hispanic population, it's re it is referred by its angelized name, the Coco Man. In Brazilian folklore, the monster is referred to as Cuca and pictured as a female humanoid alligator, the pride from the Portuguese Coca, a dragon. This is pretty big. That line was pretty big. So, Brazil is Portuguese because going with the explorer theme right in spain and portugal were the marquee explorers they went over to south america or at least portugal did and they colonized brazil so in brazil we have this monster that is based on a dragon originally in portugal is based on a dragon but in brazil is based on an alligator so we got that already. So we already got a draw link to alligators and to dragon types. And we actually got a couple of images here, which are pretty interesting. And these are very small, but they actually bring out this dragon, the El Coca, at Portuguese events, essentially. And this is what the dragon would look like. But if we were to go to Brazil... This is what they would bring out, which is the female alligator monster, and they would parade down the streets with these as well. I think this photo is actually in a Portuguese uh, parade as well. So this is like super interesting stuff going on here. So it's actually, this is in Spain. Corfora during the festival major, the uh, Santa Tessa in Tarragona, Spain. So there is a lot going on with this sort of, mythical alligator which ends up being a dragon and this is just super cool and the reason why they would think their dragons exist in spain and portugal if you don't already know well people back in the day would find dinosaur fossils and they had no idea what the hell a dinosaur was so they would be like oh wow all these dinosaur bones or all these big bones, I guess this is a dragon, and then they would make folklore be like, oh, I slayed a dragon, here's the dragon bones, and then, of course, you would believe that because, I mean, there wasn't, like, a little too much science or education about that type of stuff, so you'd be like, oh my god, like, they're so elusive, but here's the bone, I have physical proof, so yeah, you would believe it. So, I think, going back to the Pokemon here, Fue Coco, I think it's gonna be a fire dragon, I think it'll be a fire dragon type that is going to get into a bigger, fatter crocodile alligator thing. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, it could probably look pretty derpy, but fire dragon sounds hype. We have not had a fire dragon starter like without a mega evolution in a long time because we had Charizard, Mega Charizard X and uh, Mega Sceptile. 
they pick up the dragon typing, but we've never had a natural fire dragon or any sort of dragon starter before. So that is phenomenal. So I'm a big fan of Fue Coco. Hopefully that comes true. And now let's talk about Quaxley, who is our water duckling Pokemon. So Quaxley is probably a, is pretty plain. He's really plain, honestly. But we can look at his feet and we look at his hat, which is his hair. But we're going to call it a hat because it looks like a sailor's cap. And when I'm looking at this sailor's cap, I'm thinking, well, this is going to be the Pokemon that represents the adventure of this region. Like, it's going to be representing the naval aspects of both Portugal and Spain. They were both major countries in exploring and taking over the new world. And they also had pirates. So looking at this hair, I'm already thinking, I'm thinking when this thing evolves, its hair is going to turn into a different type of hat and eventually is going to become more of a pirate. And I'm thinking pirate duckling right here. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense when you think about the history of the region too. And also, if you look at Donald Duck, Donald Duck is, you know, he's a duck from Disney and he has a blue sailor hat as well. And the other major thing is the blue feet of Quaxley. And after talking to my girlfriend, she was like, well, this looks like a blue footed Bobby and blue footed Bobby don't actually are not from from Spain, but there is no other bird that has distinct blue feet like that. So I'm sort of thinking, well, at the very least, this thing ha is taking some sort of features from this real life bird. And Ryan LeCount on Twitter actually drew what it would look like for a blue footed Bobby to be the final evolution of Quaxley. And this is going with the pirate motif as well, going with the hat changing if through the evolutions from going from a sailor to a captain. And something else that my girlfriend actually mentioned to me that male ducks are called drakes. So what is what would Drake actually have to do with anything here? Well, there is the I believe it is the Spanish explorer or maybe Portuguese explorer. I cannot recall right now. There is the explorer of Sir Francis Drake. Sir Francis Drake, his last name was Drake, and male ducks are called Drake, and he was a pirate explorer. He was not a great person, but he was a famous pirate explorer, and his last name was Drake, and male ducks are Drake. I'm thinking, I'm thinking there is a big connection between Quaxley being a pirate explorer theme, getting a pirate hat at the very end on the top of his head. We, I don't really know what type he's going to be. Water dark could be a thing. I'd rather have water steel just because, you know, think of like the cutlass you'll have, like the weapons you'll have. I think that would be really cool to have like a gun and a sword. He probably wouldn't actually have a gun because, you know, it's, it's a kid's game, but at least having a sword, I think he could end up being a steel type because of that. And it would make a trio with fairy, dragon, and steel. So I'm leaning more towards that for uh, Quaxley being water steel, Fue Coco being. Uh, fire dragon and then spray gatio being a uh, grass fairy well guys let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts on what my idea is for the gen 9 starters let me know what types you think they are or any rationale you may have but yeah i'm very excited to explore this region with everyone here definitely like this video subscribe to this channel and i'll catch you later with more pokemon action peace out and have a great one